At this point, you must understand that the Turks did not come from nowhere. Ahmad Kasrabi explains, Persia is a region which has a large border with the steppe regions of Turkestan, a place overcrowded with wandering Turkic tribes. These Turks knew the region very well. The land of Persia had been known to the Turks for a long time. In fact, even before Islam, Persia had been a refuge center to Turkic tribes who fled from expanding Chinese empires or natural disasters in their homeland. But unlike Persia, uh, but unlike China, Persia did not have a large wall to protect itself from the Turkic nomads. And those Turks regularly crossed the Amudarya into Persia with their families in search of security, pasture land, and they settled wherever they could graze their cattle. If they wanted a certain patch of land, they simply took it by force. Not even a decade or two passed before these Turks forgot their commitment to their native country, Turkestan, and no longer remembered their original homeland, let alone wanting to return there. But instead, they made Persia their new homeland and mixed with the natives over time and learned to accept and embrace their culture, clothing as well as religion, while preserving their own language. With the rise of the Turkic Aqqoyunlu and the Qaraqoyunlu, Azerbaijan once again became the battlefield of Turco-Mongol infighting, with the native old Azeri population suffering the most. Azerbaijan was a seat of the Turkic Qaraqoyunlu tribe. This tribe ruled independently and waged many wars against its neighbors. After them came the Aqqoyunlu, who also founded their own empire, and soon Azerbaijan was covered with blood and fire again. It seemed like Persia, especially Azerbaijan, was in a constant nightmare. Just to give you an idea, between the rise of the Safavids in, 20, in 1528 and the decline of the Mongol Timurids, only 70 years, only 70 years had passed in which Turks robbed, murdered, raped and destroyed everything in Azerbaijan. The region was constantly the center of Turco-Mongol infighting, where the native Iranic population was getting weaker day by day. It is 70 years the old Azeri language almost disappeared, since its speakers were constantly massacred by Turco-Mongol warlords. This genocide caused a demographic change in Azerbaijan. The Turks, who for most of the time had lived in villages surrounding the big Persian cities, now were living in these cities themselves, with their language gaining the upper hand. By the time the Safavid dynasty arose in Persia, the Turks had murdered approximately 10 million people. Eastern Persia was basically depopulated by Persians, and Western Persia, especially Azerbaijan, suffered a similar fate. During all this chaos, a small group of Shia mystics, known as Safavid Order, managed to gain a foothold in Azerbaijan. With the rise of Shah Ismail, they managed to quickly gain control over Persia, defeating both the Aqqoyunlu as well as the Qaraqoyunlu and uniting the region. Even though the Safavid rule in Persia was marked by relative stability and internal peace, the Safavids are nothing Iranians should be proud of. Up until this point, Persia was a majority Sunni nation. But with the Safavids, all this changed, and Shia Islam became the state religion of the empire, through violence and force. To give you an idea how horrific the conversion of Persia to Shia Islam was, in the book Murshid Sur Kulahan, it is said that one of Shah Ismail's favorite methods of teaching a lesson to Sunni leaders who couldn't denounce the caliphs was to skin their face and body alive and leave them to die. This process took hours with the victims being in excruciating pain until they would die. The Safavid dynasty in Persia, for which every, din- for I- for which every decent Iranian should be ashamed of, would finally complete the Turkification of Azerbaijan. During the reign of Shah Ismail Safavi, the language was Turkish and he himself wrote poems in Turkish. His mother belonged to the Turkic tribe of Hassan Beg. One of the reasons why the Turkic language during the Safavid era gained more and more the upper hand was that most of the Safavid followers originated from Turkic tribes. For example, the military foundation of the Safavid Empire were the seven famous Turkic tribes of Persia, Estajlu, Shomlu, Rumlu, Tekalu, Zulqat, Afshar and Qajar. The Safavids also had the support of the Turkic tribes in Azerbaijan. If you ask why no Persian dynasty was able to arise after the Seljuk invasion, here is your answer. After 500 years of oppression, genocide, humiliation and two centuries of Turco-Mongol rule and internal infighting, the Persians had become so weak that they had literally given up. And instead of fighting liberation wars against the Turks like the Europeans did during the Balkan Wars, the Persians devoted themselves to Sufism, poetry and the Batini Jasekt. 
And thus, the Safavid dynasty came to power with the help of the warmongering Turks in Azerbaijan. And so, for the first time in Persian history, not only the kings were of Turkic stock, but also the government officials, with Turks being positioned as governors in the big Safavid capitals like Tabriz, Ghazvin and Isfahan. The Persian titles that had been used since Seljuk times were now replaced with Turkic titles such as Ishik Aghasi, Ilji, Beg, Biklar Begi, Khan Larkhani, etc. The constant wars of the Turkic Safavids against the Turkic Ottomans are another reason for the eradication of the old Azeri language and the rise of the Turkish language in Azerbaijan. It is ironic that the so-called Ottoman-Persian wars were basically wars fought by Turks against Turks. Ahmad Kesravi explains the enemy from abroad was Turkic as well as Persia's defender at home. The first war between the Ottomans and the Safavids took place in Chaldiran with the Ottomans defeating Shah Ismail. And after that, Azerbaijan was subsequently the battleground for Ottoman Safavid wars, with the region changing hands many times. In 1615, the Ottomans invaded Azerbaijan and slaughtered the people of Tabriz for three days and three nights. Azerbaijan from then on was occupied by the Ottomans until its liberation 20 years later by Shah Abbas. But after the death of Shah Abbas, the Ottomans again raided the cities in Azerbaijan as revenge and destroyed everything by setting the evacuated villages on fire. Only through the victories of Nader Shah Afshar against the Ottomans was it possible to drive the Ottomans out of Azerbaijan once and for all. Nader Shah, although he himself was of Turkic origin, loved Persia and felt as a Persian. It was only under his reign that Persia regained its former glory and greatness, which it had lost since the fall of the Safa Sassanid Empire. Nader Shah managed to extend Persia's borders considerably. With an iron fist, he took revenge from the Ottomans, the Afghans, the Uzbeks, as well as the Mughals, who had given refuge to the Afghan war criminals. His fair and just wars only gave Persia back what rightfully belonged to her. With the death of Nader Shah Afshar in 1747 and the rise of the Turkic Qajar dynasty, 50 years later, Azerbaijan, which now had a majority Turkic population, once again became a battleground, this time between the Qajars and the Russians. These wars will go down in history as the Russo-Persian Wars, with Russia defeating Persia many times and not only annexing the entire Caucasus, but also occasionally occupying Azerbaijan as well. With the treaties of Turkmenshoi and Gulistan, the Qajar Turks had to cede all these Persian territories to Russia. All these events led to the decline of the old Azeri language in Azerbaijan and the spread of the Turkish language. Within seven centuries after the Seljuk invasion, virtually nothing had remained of the old Azeri language.